it happens to be the last Sunday of the month, and this month has been declared a month to possess our possession. Father, we thank you once again as we look into your word. Your word says, the entrance of your word gives light and brings understanding to the simple. Father, let that light that darkness cannot comprehend, O God, shine upon us today in the mighty name of Jesus. So what is possession? It means to take ownership. To take ownership. And if we are saying it's a mode of possessing our possession, and that means maybe something has taken the possession and we want to recover it. We want to recover it. And our anchor scripture, uh, Obadiah 1, uh, 17, states that, but on, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Every Christian, every believer, we have something that God has prepared for us. We have an inheritance. In Christ Jesus, so many things we partake of because we are in Christ Jesus. So everyone who has received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are entitled to, to peace. We are entitled to his blessings. We are entitled to deliverance. We are entitled uh, uh, for, uh, to victory in our lives. But most of the time, we find out that as Christians, we don't experience all of these things in, in, in our lives. We don't enjoy victory in our lives. Uh, the blessings of God is not fully manifested in our lives. We don't walk in wisdom. We, sometimes we are in confusion. Sometimes we, 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 we lack direction. Sometimes we don't walk in faith. And the Bible makes us understand that uh, uh, without faith, uh, no man can please God. So many of us live unsatisfied lives because we have never received the blessings that God has already given. God has already given us a blessing. And don't forget, this, the blessing we are talking about, the possession, the possession that we are saying that we want to possess is only for those who are in Christ Jesus. So everyone who is not in Christ Jesus is not entitled to or does not have a claim to any possession. It's just that as a father, I have children. No child from outside can come and, and say he has a portion with me. So for any child to claim an inheritance in my name, that child must have been from me. So the same thing, in the kingdom of God, anyone who has not received Jesus as Lord and Savior and be translated out of darkness into his marvelous light and is now a member of the household of God has no right or is not a candidate to say he wants to claim any possession or any inheritance. So it is clear that it is only those who are in Christ Jesus who has confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior that have the right to any inheritance that is provided in the kingdom of God. But why is it that Christians are not satisfied? Why is it that we live unsatisfied lives? Even though God has made available all of these provisions, it is clearly stated in Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17 that there's deliverance in Mount Zion. Wherever people gather in the name of Jesus, that is Mount Zion. The Bible says, where two, three people are gathered in his name, he said, I will be in their midst. So God is here today, and this is our Mount Zion. And he said that upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. The Bible says that, uh, he said that, he said, in his 
presence, there is liberty. Anytime we come into God's presence, we, we receive freedom. We are delivered. And when deliverance comes, then the Bible, the Bible the, that verse is also talking about the word holiness. Now, one of the reasons why believers, Christians, don't uh, partake of this uh, uh, possession. And in the first instance, I will say, uh, why should I be saying I want to possess a possession if I have the right to that possession? Although it happens in the, in the story of uh, uh, the prodigal son, the Bible, uh, Jesus was uh, uh, preaching and um, was giving, uh, uh, talking about the, the, the parable of the prodigal son, a, fa a, ma a father who has two sons. The younger one approached the father and told him, uh, Father, give me my own portion. Give me my own portion. I want to, you know, go and start my own life. And the father, according to the Bible, divided his, his inheritance and gave to the junior one his, uh, his, his, his portion. And he went away with it. And the Bible says that after many years, he squandered everything, he lost everything, you know, he enjoyed his life, and whatever he had gotten from the father uh, was wasted, according to the Bible. And he had to begin to suffer. The Bible said that he joined himself to a citizen of that land, and he was taking care of uh, pigs swines and he would not even be allowed he was so uh he was so uh he, he was going through a hard time that even the the the, the 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 food given to the pigs he was not even allowed to take out of it so his life was so miserable his life was so miserable he lived a miserable life until the Bible said that he came to he began he came to himself and he began to meditate and said, why should I continue to suffer in this kind of situation when in my father's house, servants are enjoying life, they are living a better life. Then I will go. He said, then I will go back to my father's house and I will tell him, I'm not worthy to be taken back as a son anymore. Take me in as one of your servants. Because he knew that even as a servant, he will still enjoy and have a comfortable life. What happens is that he repented. He came to himself that he has done wrong. Hallelujah. He repented. So, now, as Christians, one of the, one of the things, one of the reasons why we don't uh, take full possession of what belongs to us, the Bible says in James chapter 4, it says, you ask I do not receive because you ask a means that you may spend it on your pleasures. So most of the time, we Christians, we ask, oh, Father, do this for me. Oh, give me this. Bless me in this way. Bless me that way. But James chapter 4 verse 3 says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask a means that you may spend it on your pleasures. So most of the times as Christians, uh, we, we tend to ask a present request to God because we want to show off. We want to show that we have arrived. We want to show that, oh, it's only me that God is answering. God is only, is only answering my own prayer. Oh, because you want to come uh, before the congregation to give testimony. Oh, yes, I just got in a, a, a job now, and that job, they are paying me uh, uh, $20,000 per month. Oh, I just bought uh, two new cars. Oh, I just bought a new house. Just you want to show off that uh, you, are, you are there. And the Bible says, that because of that, uh, the prayers are not answered. Another reason why prayers are not answered, or why we are not possessing our possession, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is 
and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So as Christians, it is, uh, the Bible states very clearly for us to have access to what belongs to us in the kingdom of God, it is by faith. And outside of faith, there is nothing we can receive. Faith is the currency of heaven. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. Just as the Canadian dollar is what we can take to a Canadian store, we can take it to anywhere to buy anything. So if you want to have access to anything in God's kingdom, you must exercise faith. So that's why it says in Hebrews 11, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if you cannot please God, how do you expect him to bless you? How do you expect him to release to you what belongs to you, your possession? So it's very key. Then another thing that is hindering us, that's not making us to enjoy all that God has released upon our lives, Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So everyone who lives in sin, everyone who indulge in sin, there's no way you can pray and God will answer you. He says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So it's very key for us to live in holiness. So, according to the scripture we read in Obadiah 1 and 70, it says, and there shall be holiness. There shall be holiness. So we all are called to a life of holiness. A life of holiness. In the name of Jesus. So, we are talking about deliverance. Deliverance from what? What deliverance? Because, uh, every, some of us Christians, we are under the bondage of the enemy. We are under the oppression of the enemy. Someone who is being uh, oppressed of the devil cannot be talking about possession. And most of the time, when we talk about possession, we look at material things. We look at buildings, houses, cars, clothing, jewelries. But also, living in uh, good health is possession. So many people, some people spend thousands of dollars as bills in hospitals, and still, after spending so much money, in the, uh, to buy drugs, to pay for bills in the hospitals, they still end up dying. But God wants us to be delivered from this kind of op oppression and bondage. But I want you to know that deliverance only comes through salvation. Deliverance comes to us through salvation. We need to be saved when you are saved and you accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Then the Spirit of God dwells in us, eradicating and fight for us, destroying every power of the enemy that is fighting against us. In the book of John chapter 3, verse 3, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except we are born again, we cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, the possession we are talking about is found in the kingdom of God. The possession we want to possess is found in the kingdom of God. And for us to assess that uh, possession, we must be born again. In Galatians chapter 3, and verse 3 to 5, it says, Even so we... When we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of this world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth a son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Jesus was sent 
to redeem us, to deliver us from the bondage that we are under the elements of this world. Don't forget, Jesus himself declared, he said, he said, he said that uh, the devil is the God of this world. The devil is God of this world. So he's the one manipulating all things. And if you don't want your life to be manipulated, you need, every one of us, we need to get hooked up with Jesus Christ totally. So Jesus was sent, said, at the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, to deliver us. So that we might receive the adoption as sons. So no wonder Jesus declared, concerning us, said that we are joint heirs. So everyone who comes to God through Jesus Christ becomes a son of God. So we are joint heirs with Christ. So what Jesus is entitled to is what we also are entitled to. Don't forget, when Jesus came to the world, he came as a man, not as a God. But we need to realize that. Jesus came as a man, not as a God. That's why he, was, he, he felt the same thing we were feeling. He was beaten. Blood came out of him. When it was time for him to be crucified, he cried. The Bible said that the cry, the tears that came out of him was like blood. He was saying, Father, if this cup can be taken away, he became afraid like a man. But because he was obedient to the cross to the end, the Bible said it was given to him a name that's above every other name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every name must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord and save, uh, is Lord forever. Amen. So it is important for us to uh, understand this, for us to have the access to our possession. We must receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. We must be delivered completely. And then we can say we have claim. Because he said that, that we may receive the adoption as sons. When that deliverance comes, then we have access. We have equal rights to the inheritance of God. We have equal right to the inheritance of God. So when we have this understanding that we are joint heirs with Christ, uh, praying not, will not be necessary. All we need to do is to align ourselves. All we need to do is to align ourselves with the word of God. And everything that God has provided for us come to us without sweat. Without sweat. All we need to do is to align ourselves. Because we have been adopted as sons. My son or my children cannot be crying for food in the house. They don't have to cry and cry for food in the house because they, they, they have access to that food. Even before they ask, it is already provided for them. There are so many things we as fathers, there are so many things we provide for our children, even before they ask. Because they are our children. They have access to what belongs to us. They don't need to beg. They don't need to pray. They don't need to fast. They don't need to cry. Or what they are supposed to enjoy in the house. It's only an outsider who is coming into the house that needs to beg, that needs to solicit. But the children of the house have freedom. They have access to enter any room in the house. No restrictions. The same to us as adopted sons of God, we have access into God's inheritance. But why are we not enjoying this? We need to develop a relationship in holiness. He said, there shall be holiness. After deliverance, after we have been delivered through Jesus Christ, he said we have been translated out of darkness into his marvelous light. After that deliverance, we need to maintain a relationship in holiness with God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, For God has not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. God has not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. 
So after deliverance, through acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the next thing for us is to begin to live a life of holiness. And how do we live a life of holiness? By obeying His word. By living according to His word. By living according to the dictates of His word. By complying to His words. Ephesians 4, verse 24, the Bible says, And that you may put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. When we have understanding of this, the race, the agitation, the pursuit of those things will not be necessary anymore. It won't be necessary anymore. We shall quickly read uh, the John chapter 15, verse 1 to 16. The book of John, chapter 15. I want to see how God is calling us into a relationship of holiness. When we are able to enter into that uh, relationship of holiness, you find out that things happen on its own accord. Without any John chapter 15, 1 to 16, I will quickly read. I am the true vine, and my father is the uh, vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. So anyone who is not living a life of holiness, God separates himself from that, from that branch. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, it prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So we cannot live a fruitful life if we don't, if, if we are not, if we separate ourselves. If we don't do the things that God demands from us, if we don't, we don't obey God, if we don't uh, follow his commandments, we can only bear fruit when we are abiding in him. Totally abiding in God. That is when we are fruitful. He said, unless you abide in me, you cannot do anything. We cannot bear fruit. Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Without me you can do nothing. So without God, everyone who profess Jesus as Lord and Savior, you must have this understanding that without God we cannot do anything. We cannot do anything without God. We cannot bear fruit. We cannot, we cannot live a fruitful life, a victorious life. We, may, we will not have access to our possession except we fully abide in him. And how do we abide in him? By obeying him. By following his word. By following his instructions according to the Bible. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch. And is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. And they are burned. That's why some people suffer. They go through uh, uh, serious persecution, serious pain and all that. Because they've deviated. They are not abiding. If you are, verse 7 now. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. You will ask whatsoever you desire, and it shall be done for you. That is it. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask whatsoever you desire, what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Hallelujah. So when we abide in God, in Jesus Christ, and the word of God abides in us, you ask, 
and he shall be done. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, he says, Unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think. You will ask, and he will do much more beyond what you are asking. Hallelujah. So, enjoying our possession. Enjoying, how do we enjoy this possession? There is no struggle. These things have been made available. Ephesians 1, chapter 3. Sorry, Ephesians 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So, whatever you may desire, whatever kind of blessing you may desire, all of these blessings have been made readily available for us. They have been, they have been uh, prepared for us. He has set that table before us in the presence of our enemies. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, who has blessed us, it's not about to bless us. Who has blessed? He has, he has already done it. It's not about to do it. It's not thinking of doing it. It's not being uh, uh, cajoled to do it. It's not being compelled to do it. Who has blessed us? We are already blessed already. All we need to do is to align ourselves with his word, and enjoy the blessing. In Matthew 6, verse 33, it says, But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek you first. So, all God is asking for us for us to have the addition of blessing, for us to enjoy the blessing that he has already blessed us, is for us to seek his kingdom first. Canadian citizens don't need to pray to assess certain things. There are certain benefits that Canadians are entitled to. They don't need to go and fast and pray because they are Canadians. So, some of these benefits may be free education. Some of these benefits may be a loan to go to school. Some of these benefits that uh, if you are out of work, you are, you are entitled to uh, some certain financial support for as many months as long as you are still not able to work, the government will continue to supply that finances to keep you up. Someone from Kenya cannot just come and assess all those things because he's not a Canadian. The same thing, every one of us who are kingdom children, we are entitled to all of the benefits of the kingdom of God. We, we don't need to so, but when we walk right, we don't even need to ask. We don't need to ask. Jesus said, said, your heavenly father knows that you have need of all of these things. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of all of these things. So we don't need to ask. Say, which among you as a father that your son will ask you for bread and you'll give him a stone? Which among of you as a father that your son will ask you for a fish and you'll give to him a scorpion? Your father knows that you have need of all of these things. Our father knows that we have need of all of these things. So we don't need to struggle for them. All we need to do to, is to seek first the kingdom of God. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added. Shall be added. It shall be added without struggle, without too much hazards. Hallelujah. 
Amen. So we are already in, you know, when you enter the kingdom through salvation, we have entered into our inheritance. And when you, Father, this is what I need, it comes without any stress. When the prodigal son asked the father, the father did not argue with him. The father did not ask him, uh -huh, yes, uh, what, what do you want to, you said you, I should give you your own inheritance, your own portion, what do you want to go and do with it? You are not of age yet. There was no questioning, there was no, the, the Bible said immediately the father divided the, his inheritance and gave it to him. When he, when he went away and finished everything the way he wanted to finish it, when he returned, the father received him with joy. So that's the way God treats us. Even when we misbehave, when we fall short, when we do the wrong thing, when we enter into error, when we realize it, when we come to ourselves and say, ah, I've, 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 I've entered error. This is a mistake. Father, forgive me. He will receive us. The Bible says that when the father saw him from afar, when the father saw him from afar, he ran towards the son and he embraced him. And quickly, he ordered the servant, oh yeah, yeah bring, bring a, a robe. Go and kill a ram. Let us throw a party. My son is back. Let us begin to rejoice. Let's begin to rejoice. Hallelujah. And that is the way God sees us. We have access. He said, all things are yours. He said, God who did not spare his own son, but freely gave him up that he may be crucified so that we, we may have access to all things. So if God delivered his own son to be crucified, what is it that we are looking for that he cannot give us? He gave up his son to be crucified. So we have all things. We have access to all that God has. Amen. Hallelujah. We have access to all that God has. We are rounding up now. I want us to just read a few uh, verses of Ephesians chapter 1 now and we shall close. Ephesians chapter 1. We've read verse 3. Blessed be God and Father Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. In verse 5 it says, having predestinated, having predestined us to adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ. Having predestined us to adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. In verse 11, him also we have obtained an inheritance in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will so through Jesus Christ we have become sons and through Jesus Christ we have access to inheritance so no more struggle the will has been written. Our name is already there. In verse 30 it says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Who is the guarantee? Hallelujah. So the only, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise which is the guarantee of our inheritance you know when the will is when the will is written there is a seal your name uh, Joshua has been written there um, Esther has been written there then the, the father now put a seal his signature on it that like, this is my will this is what I this hour I want my inheritance to be shared so the Spirit of God in us is that seal, is that guarantee that we have a portion 
in the inheritance of the kingdom of God. He said, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? Hallelujah. In chapter 2 of the same uh, Ephesians, verse 19 says, Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. That's the end. Say, don't see yourself as strangers. It's only strangers that will say, ah, a servant in the house will say, maybe I don't know whether they will mention me in the willow. Or some cousins, or far distant cousins. Say, ah, I don't even know whether the man will even put me in the willow. But says, we are not strangers, neither are we foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So we are citizens. So whatever a citizen of Canada is entitled to enjoy, all Canadians enjoy it. The same thing. Whatsoever uh, anyone who is the kingdom of God ought to enjoy, we all must enjoy it. We are members of the household of God. We are joint heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. We do his word. As long as I seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, Everything that God has belongs to me, belongs to you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up to our feet. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to also thank him. All we need to do, possessing our possession, has no need of struggle, has no need of fasting for too long, has no need of pain for too long. All we need to do is to abide. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask the Father anything, and my Father will do it. Whatever you need. You don't, we don't need to struggle too much. All we I need to ask this morning, Father, the grace. The grace to seek your kingdom. The grace to abide in you. The grace to allow your word to abide in me. Order my steps in your word, O Lord. Order my life in your word, O Lord. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. The grace. The grace to be obedient. The grace to be obedient to your word. The grace to follow. The grace to follow and to follow to the end. The grace to obey your commandments, to follow your instructions. That's all I need to have full access. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. Blessed be your name, Lord. Rabodish Kalibregere. Thank you, King of Kings. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing will deny us of our possession in the name of Jesus. Nothing will take us out of the household of God. You have declared to us in your word that we are no longer strangers, neither are we foreigners, but we are citizens, we are members of your house, oh God. Members of your household. Nothing will take us out of that household. Thank you, King of Kings. Blessed be God. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen.